Let's see. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you can hear. Okay, that's good. And I'm here for her voice Okay, Sister Audrey. Okay. Yeah. I need. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. All right. There is sound. Yes, there he is. Hallelujah. All right. Yes, sir. Just wait about another minute and then we'll get started. Okay. okay. And brother teacher, we don't have uh, a timeline. I upgraded us, so. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I, I, I'm still gonna honor <laughs> that, that time as, as close as I can, but it's nice to know that I don't talk like this in order to, <laughs> to get yes, through it all. Yeah. Yes, sir. And you go, Reverend, with an upgrade. Yeah, praise yeah, the Lord. We had to, had to upgrade. <laughs> Got to get a, a better hand on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that exactly. way we don't we don't have to worry about uh, uh, somebody hacking in. Huh? <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Yeah, yes. Well, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Those of us that are here and anybody else that comes on can. Uh, join in uh, later and uh, let's begin as always with a word of prayer our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name and dear God I uh, I make no bones about it I realize that I'm just an instrument of you all of us are dear God and as we study together Heavenly Father we ask Holy Spirit that you would just teach us and help us to hide your word in our heart that we would not sin against you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's talk about honor God today. Honor God. Uh, we continue looking at uh, the Ten Commandments. And so we're in, today we're in Exodus 20, verses 7 through 11. And uh, we're also going to look at Psalm 45 one through seven, uh, because there's great things for us to learn from both of those passages of scripture. And I'd like to begin uh, today by uh, asking, well, well, telling you, I wanna tell you a story about an impressive worship service that I was invited to attend. Uh, and this worship service was was huge. It was, uh, and and it was it was very impressive from the very beginning. From the very time that I arrived, there were people there that were greeting us, that were saying hello, that were talking to us, trying to get to know something about us. And I'm talking about greeting us at at the door, uh, practically, uh, letting us know where we uh, could be seated. Uh, the uh, it was a very emotional. I mean, when you came into the building, I mean, you could just tell in this building that it was, uh, it was just vibrating. It was, it, it was, people were ready. They were ready. Uh, as a matter of fact, from the time that a song was sung and, and people were crying, people were emotional, they were excited to be there and they were very involved. Uh, in uh, in this 
from beginning to end. And something else about it. Um, it didn't, it, they weren't worried about the time. They weren't watching the clock and <laughs> saying, well, how much more time am, am I going to be in here? Uh, they were, they were just excited to participate and they actively, many of them actively involved. They stand up, uh, they, they let it be known, uh, their, their feelings. Now I'd like for you to tell me, uh, what kind of worship service was I attending? Football game. Amen. Amen. I want to. I want to. I want to show you my souvenir that I still have from <laughs> forty-one that I attended, <laughs> and I was invited to attend this very work. This sir, and and really, the Saints people worship at a football game. Uh, they're not worried about the time. There are people that are crying. There are they are definitely involved in it. And I wonder if well, one of the things that's that's an issue in the church is that many times today people are not involved. Uh, they, uh, they 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 take God for granted. They're not as excited as they are about a football game. A lot of people are happy. Uh, today is a big kickoff of the season, mm -hmm. and there are going to be millions on top of me. They, they may not be able to go to the game, but there are going to be millions of people that are going to tune in today, uh, especially when they Tampa Bay and, and New Orleans. They can't wait to see those two guys hook it up. Uh, and, and, and yet there are scores of people. Uh, mm -hmm. They wouldn't tune in to what we're doing right now. They have little or no interest. They have no interest in God and who he is and what he can do for them. And let's learn about that. Let's learn about that today as we look at this uh, uh, third commandment. It actually, it's the third and the fourth commandment that we're going to be looking at today. And remember, we started last week and and, and our, again, our scriptures from uh, Exodus 20, uh, verses 7 through 11 first, and just a bit of background of, about that again. Uh, they, uh, uh, they had been delivered, the children of Israel, that is, the Israelites had been delivered from Egypt. They're, uh, they're on their way uh, to the promised land. They had just been delivered from Pharaoh. Uh, Pharaoh and his army, uh, his army had been drowned in the Red Sea, and and they're on their way. And, and God is just showing Himself in special ways as as water that comes out of a rock because they're thirsty. Uh, and and they get to uh, 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 Mount Sinai, and that is where God is going to. Uh, uh, Present to them the commandments. He, there, there are special things that they've got to do in order to be prepared for this. And one of the things they can't even come close to the mountain. And and Moses is the only one that goes there. And God is speaking. The people are fearful as God is is speaking. Uh, and and He gives them these commandments. And let me say this about the commandments: <clears throat> what the commandments are, none of us can obey the commandments on our own and in our own flesh. They couldn't either. So what's the purpose of the commandments? Let me ask you that question. What's the purpose of the commandment? What does James say? Uh, for the, a guideline for the law? Actually, what James says, it's a mirror. When I look into this word, this is a mirror. I, I looked in the mirror this this, this morning uh, and when I got dressed. Did y'all? Mm -hmm. and, and if I saw something that was out of place or that I could try to improve, that mirror helped me to improve it. And, and so the law is to show us just how weak we are. And of course, we can't do it on our own. And that's why we needed a savior. And the law points us toward a savior. We're also going to look at Psalm. 145 
And this is a great psalm of David that we'll talk about today, the last psalm uh, that David spoke. Now, let's just visit real quickly uh, the last two commandments. And, and I want you to do something for me. I want you, because I want you to learn it. I want you to learn these commandments as we go through them. We're not just going through it to mark time. Uh, but, but the first commandment, I gave you a symbol. What was the symbol for the first commandment? And that commandment says what? Oh, no. Have. Have no other God before me. Right, yes. And, and we're pointing to God when we say that. Now, the second commandment, what was it? What was the symbol? This was to help us to learn it. Learn the Ten Commandments. I, I, my, my, our goal ought to be to know all ten of these commandments when we finish this study. Amen. Was it on the mouth? No. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> and what what does that symbolize? Make no what? Graven image. Image. We have no other idol gods uh, before him is another way that we could say it. And, and, and that's what the bowing symbolizes here uh, today. All three, uh, the, the first three commandments, uh, or really all four, the first four commandments are connected. And they're all related to To God. Mm -hmm. And to help us in our relationship with God and to understand uh, our relationship with God. Um, and, and so we come today, we're going to look at the third and the fourth commandment. And what I like to do. Uh, I, I believe in expositional teaching, not just expositional preaching, but I believe in expositional teaching. And let's walk through the scriptures to, together today. So hopefully you have your Bible, those of you who are not driving, uh, and your book that you are studying from, Saints, uh, because it, it will certainly help us in our study today as we look at verse 7. And uh, Jocelyn, I'd like for you to read verses 7 through 11 for us, please. Okay. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that are in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Amen. May God bless the reading of his holy and precious word. See that, saints, those two commandments point us to God and how, it, last week I told you it's, it's a heart man. And God was dealing with the heart. And in that, beginning with that second commandment, he's showing us how we are to worship him, how we are to worship him. Now, this on the third commandment, I showed you another symbol to help you to understand. And this is, this is very important in our study today. Uh, uh, all, all these commandments are important. But uh, what I showed you last week, I showed you, uh, uh, I showed you how, did I, how did I demonstrate it to you? Held up what? First thing you do, I want you to hold up something first. How many fingers? The two point nine. Three. All right. What do the three represent? This is important to us. And I'll explain why as we go through this. Father, Son. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The pastor preached a sermon uh, at, at Ecclesia uh, a 
couple of weeks ago, and and uh, he talked about how we ignore the Holy Spirit. Well, the fact is, we shouldn't ignore all three of them. <laughs> all of them are important, and He is God is three and one. That's something that's important to us, and that's different from any other religion in the world, saints. There, there are uh, the, the Muslims think that we are pagans because we believe it, that there is a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and and there and yet there's one God. But that's that's what it teaches us. So that's I want you to remember that. That's important, and I'll come back to that again later in the, in the study. And then what I did is yes, the three fingers covered the mouth to represent what? Not taking it in vain. Not take his name in vain. Amen. Amen. That's that's what we that's what we're looking at today. So that's the third one. Let's talk about that third one first. Um, now, why is God worthy of honor? Why is He worthy of honor? Because He created. He Amen. Is. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and and is is it just creation? Mm -mm. Yeah. What what's some other things? Why why is God worthy of our honor? Because he he is who I am. He yeah, he is, I am. am. He is, I am. <laughs> he is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. uh, God is everything. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yes. He, he is everything. He is our all and all yes. saints. Uh, and so what is God's name? What is God's name? I am. What it, I am. And, and, and this, uh, the, the Hebrew name that we learned last week uh, was, was what? It started with a Y, actually. Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh, yeah. Yahweh. I said Yahoo. Yahoo. No, that's Yahweh. It's not Yahweh. Yahoo. Yahweh. <laughs> you use his name in vain. <laughs> I Yahweh. It is Yahweh. Yes. Yahweh. Yes, yes. That name was sacred to the Jews. It ought to be sacred to us. But what that is is that is here, here's, here's what's important to us. That is God's covenant name with the Israelites. This is. Mm -hmm. He, he, his, it's his covenant name with us because God is a personal God. He is a, he is a God that has a relationship with us and desires a relationship with us. If we're talking about worshiping him, something's wrong. If I couldn't get up this morning and say good morning, God, that's not going to be too strong in building a right relationship. Well, let me ask you something. How about how about with God? Did you say good morning to the Lord this morning? Don't no answer out loud. I just want us to all think about it. Did you thank Him for who He is and, and what He has done in your life? So, what does His name reflect when we think about His name? What does His name reflect? Holiness. It, it, it does. It, it, it reflects holiness. Anything else? Uh, well, certainly we ought to respect his name. Hallelujah. How about we say God is great. Great. Yes, but he's also what? He's love. Yes. Yeah. He's a God of what? Mercy. Right. He's a God of grace. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a good God. Yes. Amen. I, I, I know that I'm talking to right. everybody that's on here that would agree with that and would, would talk about his goodness and how he has shown his goodness toward us. Um, uh, and, and so we should not take, we should not take his name in vain. Now, what does it mean to take? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you, I, I'm sure it was, I, I believe it was in your Sunday school book uh, uh, when you studied your lesson. What does it mean to take? It means to carry, carry. Mm -hmm. or to lift up. It is to use okay. his name in a way for our own selfish purposes. You know, we got to be careful how we use in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. One of the things that we're going to learn today 
that this is one of the most abused commandments of the Ten Commandments, what we're talking about today. Um, because what does it mean to take the Lord's name in vain? Using it out of context. Okay. And, and what, what would be out of context? Give me some examples. Oh, God. Just Amen. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or like the man upstairs. All right. Yes. Yeah. We, we, there are people that refer to him as a, the big guy yeah. or the man mm -hmm. upstairs. Uh, we'll, we'll even try to, instead of saying, oh, God, we'll say, oh, my gosh. <laughs> mm -hmm. which is just another euphemism exactly. for, for God. But it's more than the words that we say. It's our attitude yeah. toward yes. his name. Yes. Uh, because uh, there are people that will, that will be lying to you, looking at you, knowing they're lying, and they'll mm. say, I swear to what? God. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. But I'm telling you the truth. And, and know that they're lying. You know why? They're trying to manipulate you into uh, uh, believing in them. And so they're using the name of God in vain. This is a great teaching moment for us because there's some other ways that we can use the name of the Lord in vain. That, uh, in, and I'm talking about in church, in church. Uh, how could baptism be using the Lord's name in vain? You said, uh oh, Bill, you, you, you're getting way off now. <laughs> how, could, how could baptism be using the Lord's name in vain? Because maybe they think that yes. that saves them. Amen. Yeah. There are people that, that, that think that baptism saves. Yeah. Yeah. Bible, I teach that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Um, um, uh, and because you say the words, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and automatically. Amen. And just because you go through the the the, the, the act Amen. of baptism, mm -hmm. that's not what saves me. Is right. it? Mm. What saves me? A change of heart, a personal Amen. relationship, yeah. and a relationship with the Lord. And what we believe, and what what we teach in in the church where I attend the most, to quote Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Is that we believe that you need to understand that before you go in the water, well, in the water and, and come up. Amen. And so that's why we don't believe in infant baptism. Right. Somebody asked the pastor, baptize my baby, he's going to tell them no. Why? Because that baby does not understand yes. the relationship that they have with God. That's using God's name in vain. And yet, in vain. A lot of churches that may do that uh, today. Amen. I'm not going. I'm not going to call the roll. Yeah, but 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 that's and, and then even us. If I don't have a relationship with the Lord, that that means that that I'm using His name in vain. I don't care if I am baptized. Let me give you another one that uh, to show you how we uh, may use the Lord's name in vain. Uh, we celebrate on the first Sunday. What? Oh, Lord. The Lord's Supper. Yeah. Now, there's some instructions that the pastor quotes from 1 Corinthians 11 every week that we give it. That, that, and, and, of course, we're doing the Lord's Supper now. We can do it every week. It's made available to us. But there's some things that we need to have in place before we take the Lord's Supper, before we lift it up, before we lift his name. What, what is that? What are some of the things that we need to take care of? We need it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we have a time of meditation. Yeah. And y'all, do you know that not everybody can take the Lord's Supper? Yeah. Now, that's something that we've lost over the years exactly. in the Baptist Church. <laughs> Amen. Now, but not everybody yeah. should be able to. Why? Because that's taking the Lord's name and name. Amen. If I have not made a commitment right. to him. Exactly. I don't care if that is my little baby and, this, and they're cute and they, 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 they want to taste that cracker. They mm. want to drink some of that juice. Mm. Mm. I'm talking about during the service. Mm. That, that, yeah. That's something Man. That's, that's important. That's using the Lord's name in vain when we do things uh, like that. 
Let me give you another one. If we ordain somebody that is not truly qualified for the position that we're placing them in, or when we when we vote on people, amen, annually to, to, to take an office. I, I know I'm walking heavy this morning, I, but I yeah, want you to understand this commandment. Yeah. And and, and, yeah, and how we use the Lord's name in vain. Because if I'm not ready, if I'm not ready to preach, if I'm, I'm not, not ready, ready to deacon, amen. Yeah. If I'm not amen. fulfilling my responsibilities as a deacon, yes. I yes. am using the Lord's name in vain. Mm -hmm. If I get out of line with the Lord, the, 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 this is the last one because I, I, I'm burdened you mm -hmm. now, Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> this is the last one. We have lost discipline in the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. We've lost it in the church. You can live with anybody. You can do whatever you want to do. Just, just make sure you come there and you pay a little money, what have you. That's, that's all right. God is not pleased with that. Amen. That is using his name in vain. Help us, Lord. Amen. Yeah, help us, Lord. Uh, I, 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 I know to quote my brother-in-law, that's tight, but it's right. Amen. <laughs> because it, it, what yes, we're doing is we are, again, abusing his name and, and, and we need to learn, uh, dear God. And, and, and every day that I get up, uh, all of us fail, amen? Yeah. yeah. Lord, I want to walk according to your word, and I want to honor your name. I want to honor it with my life. And that's mm -hmm. uh, and so that's how we can use the Lord's name in vain. So there's a lot of misunderstanding about this third commandment and that we the Lord is teaching us as we study this commandment uh, today. And, and uh, I tell you something else that I that I want to say before I move to the to the fourth commandment. Uh, this his name is abused, and you know who abuses it the most? Cults. Uh, there are people that will come and knock on my door, and they will say, "I am Jehovah's Witness," mm -hmm. to put me to try to that, that, see. I'm I'm more than you. <laughs> I, I am Jehovah's Witness. I am from Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints. Mm. That is that is a tip-off of a cult, Saints. Uh, because just mm. because I have that name over me, just because I, just because I call myself Christian, Amen. I can still be using the Lord's name in vain because if I don't believe according to the Scripture and what the Scripture says, Amen. Then, then I am uh, I am using uh, God's name in vain. Uh, let's go to the fourth commandment. Let's go to the fourth commandment. We're looking at verse eight. That's where verse eight gives us the fourth commandment. And once again, because I want us to learn what was this? What was the symbol that we had last week? For the fourth commandment, because it's four, right? Yeah. Thumb is down, and what else do you do? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what does that symbolize? Rest. Rest. Woo! Amen. <laughs> this fourth commandment is about rest. That's the Sabbath day. Amen. Because, uh, and, and we'll learn about it in our text today, and, and how uh, he, uh, um, how, how God viewed it. Uh, uh, because uh, what what the Sabbath day was was a special day, and what was special about that day? What was the purpose of it? Why did God? Well, first of all, why did God rest? Because the Scripture he, talks about God rest. Right? Finished with His work. All right. And that was, okay. yeah, that was, he was yes, he was finished with His work. Mm -hmm. God is teaching here also. Mm -hmm. God is teaching his people. And today, we, we don't, we don't, we don't, uh, the Sabbath to us and when we worship is not on Saturday, which was the seventh day, which was the Sabbath, right? What day do we worship? Sunday. On Sunday, today. Why? Because Jesus, Jesus and the resurrection. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. And, 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 and this day is a day that we uh, set aside so that we can spend some time with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. That should be our purpose for today. My main purpose 
shouldn't be to see the Dallas Cowboys play the Los Angeles Rams tonight. That shouldn't be my main purpose today. Or, who, or whatever game that, that you listen to it, it, uh, or, or, or may look at today. There's nothing wrong with looking at a game, is it? No. No. But that game should not come before God. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Or anything else that, that's in our lives. And because what I need to do is I need to spend time thinking about God, who he is, what he has done, because there's nothing in life. Uh, I, there, there was somebody who said that, uh, and, and Chuck Wan, uh, Swindoll was quoting somebody, that whatever we think about God uh, is, is and, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, all right, it tells us a lot about who we are as yeah. a person. Amen. What we think, what, what we think about God. Where, where were your thoughts this morning? And, and we are, we, our focus ought to be on him because, yes, he's the God of uh, creation, but he's, he's more than that. And he gave us that example because he wanted us to know that we ought to think about him. We ought to rest in him today on this, on this day that we're, we're set aside to, to worship him. Uh, and and uh, uh, and and so what the the, the uh, Israelites were to do in a word, in one word, was to do what? Worship, worship. 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 Another way that uh, that that word is came from worth ship. He is what worthy. worthy. He is worthy. If you were to turn to Revelation 4 and 11, and you'd read about how he was worthy. He's worthy to be worshipped, saints. And that's how we ought to treat him. We shouldn't treat God lax. Amen? Amen. Uh, you know, I, uh, our focus ought to be on him. Uh, believe me, Amen. I get it. And 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 I, I don't want to sound legalistic, and I'm I'm not. I try not to be legalistic because I know that that's not God's will. But that's why you just can't do any and everything in church, Amen. Amen. Because my focus ought to be on Him. It shouldn't be my phone. Y'all hear me? Yeah. <laughs> that, that 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 shouldn't be my. You know, some of us we spend too much time uh, looking at what's on Facebook while the preacher's preaching. Amen. Yeah. That should not be my focus. My focus ought to be on God. So it, yeah, it's yeah. more than just walking in church. My focus shouldn't be talking uh, to, to argue about what's for dinner. Amen. My yeah. focus ought to be on the Lord. And so that's what this day is set, set aside for. Because what God knows, and we talked about it last week, is that his people need reminders. We need reminders. And, and that's why on the first day of the week, Paul said in, in, in 2 Corinthians, first, we ought to lay something aside and store. You, you know, you ought to bring an offering to the Lord. Read, read Psalm 96. Amen. You, you ought to. If you don't feel compelled to, something's a little wrong with that. Because how can I say that I worship him if yeah. I'm not willing to give him my all? Give him anything that I have. Amen. Something's wrong with that picture because he's first and I ought to put him first on that day. And the Lord knew, knew, knows that we need reminders. And so that's why this day is set aside every week. Amen. Uh, because we, we, need to, we need to worship God right. We need to worship God reverently. And we need to, we need to worship God regularly. Yeah. It's, it's something Amen. not just on Sundays, but every day. Amen. 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 Let's, let's turn the song now. Psalm uh, 145 and uh, verses, uh, and, and I'd like, I'm going to ask Audrey to read verses 1 through 7. Mm -hmm. Psalm 45. Okay. 145. I will extol thee, my God, O King. I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day I will bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy work to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. 
I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty, of thy wondrous work. And men shall speak of the night of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. That they shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. So we learn in this psalm, and this psalm is, who's the writer of the psalm? Anybody have any idea? David. David. Yes. It's the last psalm that he wrote before his death. And this is known as a psalm of praise. There are no petitions in this psalm. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. There are no petitions. All he does is praise God. And he makes three major points in this. And, and, and the first one, and we're just going to talk about the first one today, is verses one through seven. Because the theme of this psalm is, did you not know that our God is great? Yes. <laughs> Amen. And because of that, he's greatly to be praised, amen, is, is what the, the psalmist says. Uh, and uh, so um, they are to, uh, to to worship. David says he, he's going to worship him. He says, I will. What, what, first off, let me, see, let, let me give you something else about this psalm. This is an acrostic psalm. Now, you know what I mean when I say an acrostic. Uh, it's you take the first letter, like you take the first letter of somebody's name. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. You know what's so good about an acrostic? And this is the first letter of, of the of the Hebrew alphabets, and there are twenty two alphabets in the Hebrew alphabet. And I notice that there are twenty one verses here, and there are a lot of explanations as to why there's only twenty one, and I can't get into them. And I don't think that's the most important thing. I think what's important here is that David is trying to teach us how to worship the Lord. He's teaching us how important it is to worship the Lord. And he's put a lot of thought in it. When somebody takes the time in an acrostic to look at what each letter represents and tie it to the person, that is something that's, that's very uh, uh, beneficial, saints. And, and what it does is it, it shows us that they put a lot of thought in it. And one of the reasons it's in the form of an acrostic, because if, 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 if I say A in I an alphabet, and then I come up with a statement for A, and then B, and I come up with another statement for B, it's another way of helping us to memorize it. That's why, I give it, that's why I'm giving you the symbols. Amen? Right. Because it's going to help us if, if, we, if we practice them, if we use them to learn that word. And David want people, wanted people to learn, not only in his day, but for us, because this is a song of David's a musician, a writer, and he loves to praise the Lord. Let me tell you something that was that's how this song is abused by our Jewish brothers centuries ago. The Jews believe, because they believed in prayer, praying three times a day. And and Pastor, I'm glad I don't have to worry about the time. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all, I'm 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 moving. Toward a conclusion, you know, mm -hmm. like, like preachers say. <laughs> <laughs> well, this just the first one. You got three more to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what what uh, 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 what the Jews believe is that if you pray this prayer, this was an important prayer to them. This uh, it, it was called, and I'm just going to spell it: the Ashri A S H R E I Psalm. And they believe if you prayed it three times a day, that's the way that you could get to heaven. If you mm -hmm. pray this particular psalm three times a day, we know that's not true, don't we? Right. Because we know that the only way to get to heaven is how? Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. The, the, the son. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I must believe on him by faith because yeah. no matter what I do. And see, that's the problem with legalism. Legalism comes up with little formulas like that, and right. if you practice this, then you're all right. You're not all right unless God makes you all right. Amen. Amen. Say that. that. That's how they abuse this psalm, and so they would <laughs> recite it three times a day. Uh, but that's not the point of what, that David is making here, uh, because what he wants us to do is he wants us to reflect on God. He wants, and, and, and if, if you have a problem with praise, 
you ought to read this psalm over and over again. Amen. Not, not only this psalm, Psalm 146 through Psalm 150. Amen. Because let everything that what? Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalm 150. Uh, and, and so we, we, we ought to praise him. Amen. Uh, and, and, and praise is very important to us. And I want to go back to this. I want to go back to this. Y'all remember that, that worship service that I attended? Because <laughs> there, there are many people that they worship football. Amen. And because you can worship more than God. Amen. Mm -hmm. You understand that you can worship yourself. Mm -hmm. And some people, they sing in a choir because they worship singing. They don't worship God. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a difference. That's a difference. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where I'm going with this. Worship is important to us. And the praise is important to us. Because here's what I want you to imagine. In Super Bowl 41, man, they kicked that game off, and the guy took it back almost 100 yards. Bam! And we thought, oh, Lord, we in trouble. <laughs> the offense couldn't hardly do anything. But rushing to the end of the story, they won the game, and they won it impressively. Uh, one of the defensive backs intercepted the ball. We knew the game was over. And can you imagine this? Because I want to show you something. I want to show you something of this. Some of my souvenirs that I kept <laughs> always. Y'all see this? Is it a sideline pass? Uh, no, it's pre-game. Uh, I mean, uh, oh, you, you pre -game. go to the field after the game. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Now, not everybody could do that. Mm -hmm. not, not everybody had that right, that privilege. Mm -hmm. But I, I was wearing my pride. Amen. Because <laughs> I could do that. But can you imagine? Can, here's what I want you to imagine. Is if the announcer at, at, at come over with the intercom and said, now all of you that are in the stadium, we would ask right now that you would just sit down and be quiet. Don't say a word <laughs> yeah. until the team has their ceremony and they leave the field. Oh. There was no way that could be done, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right. What praise does, it affirms who my God is. Amen. 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 I, I, I admit, I am from that noisy crowd. Amen. Yeah. My daughter's from the noisy crowd. She's gotten some of the churches where she's attended. There have been people that have been critical uh, of, because she loves to praise the Lord and praise yes, God. Yeah. When I read this psalm, David is not quiet. Yeah. He mm -hmm. is enthused. When What do you think extol means? It means to enthusiastically. <laughs> Praise our God. Right. I'm enthusiastic about it today. Are, are y'all ready to worship today? Amen. Yeah, Amen. Lord. Amen. Let's, 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 let's bow down and let's worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah, there's a way to worship God and there's a wrong way to worship God. And I've got to put my heart in it. You know, the thing I like about it is David, what I love about Christianity and what I love about the Psalms, one of the reasons we love the Psalms is because the Psalms, not only is it a thinking, there's a lot of thought that goes into this, amen, but also feeling. You can feel it. Mm. And I'm so glad that I serve a God that I can feel, amen, that, that I amen. have a relationship with him. Yeah, Lord. I can feel his presence. <laughs> I can feel his power. Yeah. And that's what, that, that, that's what David uh, uh, demonstrated to us in this song. And he said that my God is king. He's king, amen. Because again, when, when you let loose that praise, it releases something in you. We would have yeah, felt empty yeah. if we had left that game and we hadn't we hadn't praised. If you don't praise the Lord, and, and, yeah. and I, I get it, there's some people when, when we get to praise and worship today, they won't hardly open their mouth. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm so glad he said make a joyful noise that yeah. I don't have to sound like I'd be a Tony. Amen. Yeah, thank you. He said, yeah, make a song. Song. Me and Randy, we can just say. And, and, and I can give him praise. Amen. Yeah. He didn't have to say, uh, I know Tony's listening, he didn't have to say I had to be in tune. He just said make a joyful noise. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Because it's my heart condition. Amen. It, it, yeah, it, it, Lord. It's not how I sound to the people out there. Amen. And and, and 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 so what what David uh, what what David is saying to us is that I'm, I'm going to extol him, I'm going to praise him, and that my God is King. Now we lose that in the United States of America. We should not forget what a King is. What is the King? Yes, I'm talking. No, I want I want you to give me some input. What is the King? He's the ruler. 
Yes, he is the ruler. He's an authority. He is the authority. He's the final authority. Yeah. There is there is no uh, Supreme Court. Amen. Right. He is he is the final authority. Uh, and 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 so um, uh, that's who our God is. He is our King. He's our all in all. And what he says makes a difference. His name means something. Uh, just just a couple of more examples, because uh, branding means something in in our world today, in the corporate world. And, and I'm gonna give you a couple of quick examples. If I say BMW, what do you think of? Vehicle. Yeah. You think, well, it's not just a vehicle, is it? No. It's, it's a luxury. It's a yeah. luxury vehicle. vehicle. They want you thinking, when you think of them, they want you to think luxury, all right? Yeah. Uh, they, they want you to think it's one of the finest automobiles that's ever made. If, if, if I told Audrey that I'm going to get her a Christmas gift from Tiffany, mm. and she'd be excited about that? Mm -hmm. What's the difference between Tiffany and me going to Walmart? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Tiffany exclusive expensive extravagant Walmart. god has many times more <laughs> than than tiffany his name is that important and we ought to worship him saints yes uh, and 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 I, let me say this in conclusion uh, that's why our uh, our brother melvin would love that song so much because yeah, he said Lord. I love to what? Praise, Praise him. him. Praise what? Him. His holy name. name. Amen. Yeah. Is what the song goes on to say. That ought to be our attitude also, saints. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we uh, close out our uh, Sunday school Thank lesson you. today. Heavenly Father, we ask for your wisdom and we ask for your strength because we want to honor you through our lives, not just with our words, but with our lives uh, and our actions, the very actions that we take. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the many ways that you have blessed us through our relationship mm -hmm. with you and that we can have a relationship with you. And may we Thank share it God. with others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. See you at church in a few. All righty. All right. Love y'all. Love you. God bless. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye. Thank you.